context of that quote? No. Did you know the context of the words you quoted? No. The Quran doesn't say that. The Quran doesn't say this is a revelation from God, but to fully understand it, you have to go and ask this guy in the park because I haven't fully explained myself. The what has that got to do with the Quran? the Quran? Asking a guy in the park. I'll go to the next one. The Quran says, ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. Okay? So it does say that. In fact, you, Andy, I can tell you right now that maybe I've read certain verses from certain websites, yes, well, either yourself or certain websites, without understanding the context. And I don't, look, many people make this mistake, that they take things out of context and then try to interpret it themselves, okay? Because I can assure you that the term mercy comes in the Quran more than the term that God punishes or God uh, smites someone down, okay? So the mercy of God is something far exceeds his uh, punishment and his, uh, his wrath. Now this is what the Quran has taught us. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one of his titles is his Rahmatul Alameen. He's a mercy to mankind. Yes? So if you look at the history of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his biography, you will come to the understanding that his most ardent enemies, yes, he forgave them. Even the people who murdered his uncle, those people, yes, the Habashi, the Abyssinian, and um, the woman, I forgot her name. Um, he forgave them, only he said, please don't come in front of me. That means he didn't want to see them because it reminded him of his uncle. Now, this is something shows us from the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he was merciful to his most hated, his enemies who hated him the most and who, who basically killed his family. And then it comes to the time during the conquest of Mecca where the Meccan pagans who used to persecuted him and his companions and they killed many of his companions and they boycotted him and they had sanctions against him yes when he came became victorious over them with an army of 10,000 he did not go and massacre all of them no he forgave them this shows us that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gives everyone and shows everyone their mercy and only as a last resort yes those people are then punished or or even after that they are not even punished in this world they're punished in the year after for sure and this is what I'm saying if the test was unfair then surely on the day of judgment Andy will stand in front of God and you will have to explain why did you feel the test was unfair you know maybe you don't believe in the life after death now Yes, well, but one day. No, no. Look, I gave you ample opportunities no, to tell me why the test was unfair. I gave you many reasons, and you didn't really answer my reasons. I did. You just said. I did. In fact, every single point you raised, I refuted that, and I did respond to it. Only in your head. Okay. Tell me, tell me one point that I did not answer to. Go on. Give me one point you made that you don't give answer to. I don't want to bore people by go all the way back to the very first one, accident of birth. Did I not, uh, did not I respond to that? Said is that? People can change their religion. And I said, yes, that's true. But generally speaking, people will continue in the religion that they're born in. No, but I did respond to that. You responded. So for you to say I did not respond, it's not fair. Respond, refute. If well, you say you responded, that's fine. Okay, because that, was, that point, wait a minute. You're trying to edit. That point wasn't worth refuting. So I, I responded to it. There are certain points which you raised, like for example, where you said that God wails someone. Okay, yeah. I refuted that from the context. You can keep, look, you can keep shaking your head, but for a person who hasn't read the Quran in the context, the words in the context, okay. If you've read the Quran, the thing you know about it is that it, it, it should be separate from the context. It's the word of God. It doesn't need... Why does it need to be separate editing. from the context? It, it doesn't need editing. Oh, so you make up the rules what should be, how the Quran should be revealed. Wow. No, it says that in the Quran in many places. What does it say? It says like there's a specific rule and there's general rules. And some people will try and use the general rules to define the specific rules. But really, I want you just to follow the specifics. This is a book in plain verse. It says that many, many times throughout the Quran. Uh, this is, you know, you're just to follow this. You're not to add to anything to it. You're not to take anything away from it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, you see, you're talking about two different things. One is the laws that God has prescribed. Yes. yes? The other is the Quran itself. So the Quran is the one... And the Quran is the laws of God. Exactly. So why would you add something to a book of law? Yes, no. It is like me asking you, will you change the rules of DVLA just to satisfy your own whims and desires? No, you wouldn't. You were adding... How did I add? 
context. You say you have to add the context. What is the context? We don't know. God hasn't told us. He did. We'll you didn't to listen to it. No, no. Okay, I'll tell you what. This verse which you mentioned. You're, wait a minute. This verse. Context, hold on. Adding, Andy, Andy, no, it's not. You don't know what the meaning of context is, do you? Context doesn't mean. Wait, wait. Context doesn't mean adding to it. Context means understanding. The situation that you're talking about, you don't even know the meaning of the word context. How can I explain to you? For you to say, it's not pretentious. For you to say, for you to say that I'm adding to it by 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 asking you to reflect on the context implies that you don't understand the meaning of the word context. Okay, what is context to you? Let's explain that. No, it's quite important because you somehow maybe. Okay, context. Yes. The word text is from the text. No, I'm asking the meaning of context. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. Text, T E X T, with the text. It's the bit that goes before the text and after. The okay. Which means understanding the text in its context. Yes. Now, what did I say? That was that was changing what is in the Quran by asking you to reflect on the context. What did I change? Because you said I added something to it. Yes, yes go on, tell me. You, you said that when he says some people would put a veil over their face you know, so they won't be able to understand, you added that that's actually only referring to certain people who rejected the Quran multiple times. Yes. But it doesn't say that in the, you know, in the verses. That, that's something that you're... Oh, I see what you mean. So you're saying it has to be verbatim what I said with regards to this. You know one thing, Nandi, do you understand that the Quran is not the only book of law or of uh, in, in Sharia? The law within Sharia is not just taken from the Quran. Yes, yes, we have something called the Hadith yes, and the Tafsir yes. and the uh, Sira, yes, which yes. is basically the biography. Yes, yes. The Tafsir is uh, uh, the commentaries. Yes. So it basically is all of this. So for you to say Allah did not say that, you somehow are trying to say that it has to be only from the Quran. Because the Prophet gives us the context as well, not just the Quran. Okay? So what I'm saying is that this is this is basically the Bani Israel that God is talking about. Allah says Allah has sealed their hearts. Yes? Because if you understand the Bani Israel, you know who the Bani Israel are? Okay. So this is basically the Jewish people. Mainly, yes? The children of Israel. Yes? Many of the majority of the prophets came to them. So so they they rejected most of them they killed many of them the prophets and these people even though they have been given multiple warnings they rejected the message of God now wait a minute it is the this is the context for you to understand as to why God has put a veil over them or basically seal their hearts Allah says that they are deaf dumb and blind and they will never return to the truth do you understand? That is the context that I'm trying to explain to you. I'm not adding anything to the verse. To see that we're getting back to the point of it. It's not just, is it? You still haven't explained why. Why? Look, if somebody gives okay. you... Listen, listen, wait. You think it's unjust. Could I talk a little bit? Because we did. I did the punishment not suiting the crime. So that, that's one point. Another point... You were no, but that's got nothing to do with the test being unfair. Oh, that's got nothing to do with the test being unfair. What you're talking about is the consequences of failing the test. Two different things. So please not move the goalposts from where we are. Right now we are discussing, so far you have said accidental birth. Okay? Maybe the place where you're born, if you're born in a Muslim family or a Muslim uh, country, you somehow automatically become a Muslim. I agree with that. I've already discussed that with you. I said yes, generally that is the case. But then many of them when they grow up, they reflect on what they believe and they either stick to the religion uh, or they don't. Okay? So with, with regards to being fair and unfair, yes, I think an age, maybe during, um, maybe when they are 14, 15 years old, when they start going to college, university, yes, then they reflect on this because they now come into contact with other people other than their family, yes. After that, if they, after that, if they insi insist that they want to remain in the faith by their own research, yes, then I think that is fair.
Is it not? So what was the back then? You must know that that often doesn't happen. What happens actually is some people who go off, maybe they're born here, they're raised in the Muslim family, they go off to university, they meet other people, they meet atheists, they change their mind and they leave the faith. Other people who are maybe born, let's say in Afghanistan or Sudan, they grow up, they never go to university, they never leave home, you know, they just move to the house next door, they never leave Islam. Okay, you're born. You're born in. My point would be yeah. that they're going to be rewarded, not for any good that they did, but just because they lived in a circle. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not how Islam works, my friend. No. No, no, no. When you, when you become a certain age, you consciously are now acknowledging Islam and the belief in Islam. So you acknowledge that Allah is your God and you acknowledge that Muhammad is your messenger and you say this formula of the Shahada to become a Muslim and a practicing Muslim by that meaning you, you go and pray, you fast in Ramadan, you give your charity or zakat. This is what makes you a Muslim, not just being in a, culture, a cultural Muslim. A cultural Muslim will be held accountable on the Day of Judgment just like any other person on the Day of Judgment. So, so for you to say, oh, just because he was born in a Muslim, he's guaranteed to go to Jannah. No, 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 it doesn't work like that. You, if you stop, look, if you do not pray, for example, yes, this is a huge sin, yes? If you stop praying, then you will be held accountable for not praying. If you do not give zakat and you are obliged to give, uh, sorry, you're obligated to give zakat, it is fard on you and you do not give it, then you will be held accountable for it. So all these people are now sinning and these are major sins, not minor sins. Yes? So for you to say that just because they're born in Afghanistan or born in some Muslim country or a Muslim family, automatically they go to Jannah. No, no, no. It's not, it's not a free ride. Look, for Jannah, no, no, I'm just saying, for Jannah, for going to paradise, yes, Allah is fair. Whom he puts in Jannah, in, 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 in paradise or in hell, Allah is fair in both cases. Yes? So for you, just being born and being a cultural Muslim doesn't automatically guarantee you a paradise. Yes? I, I do see the point you're making. Good. So what now. What I'm really saying is people, they're, they're going to be judged on their behavior, and your behavior is heavily influenced by the culture that you live in. Actually, so, no, no, not necessarily. Not there, are many, there are many cultures out there. They are Muslim, but when they come to practicing it, every country have their own black sheep, as you would say, that they, they, they basically do not practice a religion. They might just have a Muslim name. For example, in Ireland, you're Irish? No, Scottish. Scottish, sorry. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so in Scotland, there are many people who believe in God. They're born in a Christian country. You might be born in Scotland, but you're not a Christian. You see what I mean? So the same thing applies whether you're a Christian, a Hindu, a Muslim, that you at some point in your life yeah. make a conscious decision, yeah. yes, that you want to stay in your faith yes. or reject it. Yes, yes. Now, how is God unfair? Oh. I mean, we're going right. No, no, I still, no, to be honest with you, but, your response yeah, as to I'm why the test that God has given every human being with intellect, with a, with a, yes. with a mind, Okay. And with the open mindedness and with the opportunities, yes. uh, this test, I still don't okay. see why okay. God is unfair. Okay. Uh, no, I think we should another. move beyond this yes. accidental yes. birth. Yes. What is the other? Agree, what is the other yes. reason? Uh, Go on. Agree. Yeah. Um, what was the other reason? The other thing, uh, like why test them in the first place? Because the test seems to be the really crucial thing is it's the believing or not believing. If it would make sense to me and many atheists, if we were the test was where you're a good person, where you're kind, if all your good deeds were rewarded and all your bad deeds were punished, that would make sense to many people. Who decides that? But uh, God would decide that. So it's still a test, right? Yes, yes, that's right. So you're still asking for a test? No, no, I'm just saying that would be, I'm going to say a fair test. The test that we have is it's all basically do you believe or do you not believe? No, no, that, for you to say, that's the most important you know, wait. Thing. For you to say who does good to be rewarded yeah. and who does bad to be rewarded. Yeah. So who, you know this good and bad are subjective. Yeah. Do you agree? Well, well, maybe not to God, but yeah. I no, no, to God as well. I mean, sorry, not subjective to God. I see what you mean. But you see, in the eyes of God, yes. not believing in Him yes. as, and acknowledging Him as God yes. is the biggest sin. Yes. I mean, I, I, so by your principle, yes. God is still punishing the one who's sinning. Yes, yes. I mean, so how is it unfair? Uh, I mean, another, 
why would we test people at all? Why? Yes, well, what is it, what's the object of the test? Like with the DVLA, you want to make sure that everyone can drive a car before they get their license, yes. or else they call license. Yes. But in God's test, you live your whole life, you, everyone gets a license to live. No, no, that's, a, that's not how we... You know what I mean. Yeah, I know what I mean. Okay, so, but you see, so we, don't, we don't live in a world, we don't live in a world where there is anarchy. There has to be rules and regulations for everything. Yeah. Every system has rules and regulations. Yes. And this is exactly what the test is. Ah, uh, but it's not. You see, if the test was, if God punished people while they were alive for doing bad things, they would do less bad things and the world would be better. You know, but he doesn't. if he God did that... Do terrible things. Hitler lived a long, long Andy, life. Andy, if God punished you for every single sin yes. you committed, yeah. do you really think you'd be alive? <laughs> I might have a sore back, but you know it just shows it just shows that God is merciful no. for not testing us for every sin that we commit. No, 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 the no, fact no. the fact that we are not punished for every sin we commit, yeah. and at, at every step we would be committing sins. You know what I mean? Being human, it is in our nature to seek what is sometimes forbidden. Yeah, forbidden and what is evil. Like for example, many people, if they were given the chance, yeah. yes, they would commit sins. Yeah. For example. There were, I think, there were certain tests done by, uh, uh, by uh, um, where they would actually see if the people would commit some uh, something like theft or yeah. steal something if nobody's watching them. Yes. Yeah. yes? Yeah. And they would, because they got nothing to lose. Yes. You yes. see, they said they got, I got everything to gain and nothing to lose. Yeah. So in that circumstance, they would commit sins. Now imagine a world without God where God would not hold you accountable and every person was allowed to do whatever they want without a test as you would say yeah. yes or a t or in fact that in fact the test that you're asking for for is even more strict than the one that God has already um, put into place because you're basically saying that why does God not punish us as soon as we commit a sin mm -hmm. isn't it yes. imagine yes. imagine your life from the day that you became yeah. conscious of what is good and bad yeah. Yeah. until today Yes? How many bad things that you have done? Yes. Imagine if God punished you for every single one of them. Trust me, you wouldn't be alive today. Do you agree? Uh, no, no, because... You don't? Because the punishment, uh, to be just, would have to fit the crime. So... Yeah. You know, so what would be the crime for... Let me ask you. Think of the bad things I've done recently, nothing okay. really made Let me ask you, what would be, what would be the punishment yeah. of theft? Say, for example, you saved a lot of money all your life. Yes, yes? yes, and you're going to deposit this money, yes. okay, and in the bank, and somebody steals your life earning. Yes. What do you think should be the punishment for that oh, person? That, that would be a severe punishment. What is, give me an example. Oh. What is severe according to you? Oh, I don't know. Why not? Maybe cut a leg off or something. And that's Almost. exactly what the Quran says, you know? Cut a hand. Yeah. Thank you very much. And this is, but, but no, you see... No, that's a different... No, it's not different, because you think theft is not something that is trivial. No. It is something... Because many, you know, many times when, when a person's belongings are, are stolen, they, they, sometimes, they sometimes become mad. Yes. yes? They, they basically, they completely lose everything. They lose their family, they lose their, their loved ones, they lose their jobs, they lose many things. So even though for, for that person who stole that thing, maybe not, not be something um, massive or something big, but for the person who lost it, it's something yes, yes. quite massive. I mean, I'm quite agreeing yeah. with you there. So you but, but we've jumped from talking about this test. And my question was, what is the point of the test? No, no. It's not to make us behave better. It is, actually. Well, it yeah, is. It, it, because if God if tells you... Was, but here's the problem. Yeah. If that was the point, if the point was to make us behave better, then God should intervene and punish no. us. No, that wouldn't be a test then. To a greater extent. That wouldn't be a test. Every, I know, but imagine you ima imagine you got a three-hour test, I know, but and and your and your supervisor comes and intervenes every time whenever you answer a question wrong. Would that be much of a test? No, it wouldn't. But you're saying if your reason for the test is to improve behavior, that, that you, you're no, I don't think that. I didn't say that is the only reason. I said, look, okay. if a person knows that there is consequences to his actions. Yes, yes then surely that person is going to control his behavior to some extent. If there was no control at all, for example, many, I don't know if you're an atheist agnostic. Atheist. Atheist. So you as an atheist, yes, your moral ground is nothing. You, you, you make up your morals as you go along. So maybe you see that most of the people in the society today, yes, they feel that incest is wrong. So you say incest is wrong. But tomorrow, 
just like homosexuality was made legal in this country when it was illegal before that yes then they will say okay now most of the society accepts incest yeah. so now i find no problem or no issue with a with a father and son sleeping with each other if they love each other and they're grown enough to to basically consent to that kind of relationship so you're kind of following but here's the thing if the point of the test is if the idea is that believing god will make you better make society better following Sharia, it doesn't seem to be working no i didn't say that was the reason All right. i said this will stop you to a degree yes to committing a sin if the the converse was true i if there was no if there was no check at all no look just because you follow a religion yes yes that doesn't mean there were people in the religion who would break not break the law yes if everyone follows the religion to the letter then trust me there will be harmony in the world but we don't live in ethiopia yes in fact neither the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam nor allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects everyone in the world to become a muslim Yes, because if that was the case, then Allah would actually give rise to another creation who would actually commit, who would be tested and who would commit this uh, test and t Allah would test them that they would be committing wrong or right, depending on that. So this is something that we are not expected or expecting from the Almighty in our community. In our community, you will find all sorts of, uh, what do you say, uh, temptations. You'll find all sorts of people who would actually tempt you to do something wrong. And you would also find the converse of that, that there are people who are good, law-abiding, and they would tempt you to be good and law-abiding, yes, depending on which camp you will fall, yes, depending on which friends you have sometimes, depending on which form of education you receive, or what kind of ideology you follow. So all this is taken into consideration. And if anyone says that the test that God has given every human being is unfair, then I think they really will struggle to answer as to why it is unfair. Like the exact opposite. So how you can say this is a fair test? Oh, it doesn't make people better. Uh, it's not really aimed to make people better. God could just make people better. Uh, the punishment doesn't seem to fit the crime. The likelihood of passing the test. Sorry to go over it again. You're all over the place, Andy. You're all over the place. I'm asking you not with regards to what happens as a consequence of failing the test. The test itself being unfair. Yes. That is a bit that you're not answering. Okay. Uh, like you're answering everything else other than that. All right. Sorry. Uh, I mean, a another thing about the test is it seems to be kind of like a riddle. You know? How? Like you, you look at the world and there's arguments for God, but like I say, they're quite weak. Uh, there's things quite often people cite miracles in the Quran or miracles in the life of the Prophet, but they're never really convincing. You know, they're always kind of. Well, it's kind of something he said long ago has sort of come true. No, no, no. I don't think you're. I don't think you're asked to believe in miracles, to believe in God. I don't think you're asked to do that. In fact, most of the Muslims today, and in fact, most of the people today, most of the miracles that were performed by were prophets in the past, and th those times have, have. So the people who actually were witnessing the miracle, it is for them to believe or reject it. Because wait, wait, Andy. What I'm saying is that for you, no one is asking you to believe in the miracle. All I'm asking you is yeah. to ponder by yourself on, 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 on the intellect that God has given us all. Okay, I've got a better answer maybe to your question. Why is it unfair to it? Let me try this. Go on. If you had a, some primary school children and you gave them a, like a physics paper that they had to be yeah. tested on, that wouldn't be a fair test because it's beyond their ability. You know, yeah, you know something? Let me ask you this question. Yeah. Imagine the paper was already out. Yeah. Yes? And you can easily find the answers to those questions. Yes. Would that be a fair test? Uh, no, that would be uh, an unfair test because some would see the answer and some wouldn't. Oh. You know. Well, I wouldn't call it unfair. unfair I, I, would, I would call this a test for you to answer sincerely yeah. because not to just copy somebody else. Yeah. Yes? But the thing is, you know what? Just to tell you that yeah. the test paper is already out. Yeah, I know. You know what? what you, you heard of it? Yes. yes. I read it. Yes. So I Allah, know. Allah will. I mean, you will be asked three questions yeah. in yeah. your grave. Okay. Yes. Who is your Lord? Yeah. Yes. You will be asked about the Prophet yeah. and about your faith. Yeah. What is your faith? Uh, so the thing is, the paper is already out. Yes. Now, whether you ask a primary school, know, or whether you ask a secondary school, yeah. or whether you ask a grown man like yourself and myself, yes. Yeah. That is that is the question to this. Yes. Now. 
if you know the questions yeah. yes here's another thing. wait 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 andy if you know the questions already yeah. it is for you to prepare for this test because the syllabus is already out uh, yeah. now this syllabus is for you now to understand yeah. and to accept it or to reject it yes. first and foremost you do, you as an atheist do not even even believe in life after that yes, yes. okay so for you to ask all these questions about the yes. test being unfair yes. the consequences of all this yes, yes comes should come secondary yes. your first the, the I think your, your, your first question would be, does God exist? Yes. And if you believe God exists, tell me why He exists. Yes. That should be your first question. Yes. Because once you understand that, yes. then these things should be your worry. Yes. But before you worry about these things as a consequence of the test and failing of the test and the fair test or unfair test, yes, yes. Why, why wouldn't you ask yourself right. that all this universe which exists today, do you think it just popped into existence one day? Uh, it was an old argument, but yes, it, according to scientists... It Which scientists said it just popped into existence? Uh, famous one is Lawrence Krauss. So Lawrence Krauss believes what? We came from nothing? Uh, pretty much that. I think Steve Hawkins believed that when no, he died. No. I don't think Steve Hawkins believed he came from nothing. Don't forget that he's a human being and he, can be, he could he be, wrong. be wrong. No, no, wait. You know, Lawrence, Lawrence Krauss, yes. nothing is actually something. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. So his nothing is not nothing. Yes, yes? I, I agree, but his nothing is a kind of eternal nothingness. Exactly, but what I'm saying is that his nothing is not nothing, it is actually something. Yes. Nothing in reality is a yes. concept which is a concept, but it doesn't really exist. Nothing is a concept. Nothing is what? It is the absence of everything. So anything that you can imagine, anything yeah. that you can observe, anything yeah. that you can yeah. see, all this thing is not nothing. It is something. Yeah. So what you can imagine, even if yeah. you imagine uh, uh, a flying spaghetti monster or something, yeah. Yeah. that is still something. Is is your imagination? Yeah. Yes. Even in reality, it might not exist, but it's yeah. still yeah. an imagination. You see what I mean? I wouldn't no, call it no, nothing. No, 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 well, here's the problem. Okay. If you're going to count concepts as things that exist, then nothing exists because nothing is concept. Okay. What is nothing? Explain. No, no. It, it, Concept. See, it's, it's, it's whether you think concept. No, but nothing. Look, look. Nothing is not really a thought, is it? Nothing is for us to understand in order for us to communicate the difference between something and nothing. So nothing yes. is to me. Correct yes. me if I'm wrong. Nothing to me is the absence of everything. Or the Do you agree? Of yes. oh, no, no. Absence of everything. Yes. Even something which you can think. Yes. Even the absence of that. Yes. That means even your thought. Yes. So for me, nothing. No, no. For me, nothing. Right doesn't include even thought yes but okay because to me thought is something to me thought is inspiration yes. to me thought can be but, but the spaghetti monster that doesn't exist yeah in any way, shape, no no what I, I think you misunderstood exists, yes, maybe well, I, I think you misunderstood what I meant by nothing right. yeah. because to me nothing is the absence of everything including thought uh, right. oh, okay you see what I mean okay so using the concept where the yeah universe, okay, so yes. using this concept yes. yes do you think nothing can bring something of value of material into existence? Yes. Uh, yes? I don't think it did happen, but it could have done. So something can come from nothing? Yes. How? Nothing uh, doesn't even exist. Uh, no, no. <laughs> but but uh, if it happens, things, things we could happen. do it even now. Yeah, well, from this nothing, is, we no, could but, do something. Yeah, but this, this, is, this, this is the reason to think it doesn't happen because as you look around, we don't see things popping into existence. So don't, no, no, that wasn't my. That wasn't my. No, no, no. Well, this is my whole answer. point. This is how I think yeah. about it. I'm not saying the universe did come from nothing, by the way. Oh, you don't. I, I don't okay, know. because that was my question actually. Right. Do you believe that we came from nothing? We meaning okay. everything, including us yes. and the universe. Uh, I'm just saying that a lot of intelligent physicists think that that's exactly what they. No, I don't think so. I don't think any physicist yeah. would say we came from nothing. Because even even yeah. people like Stephen Cross, yeah. yes, yeah. even they believe that that nothing they're talking about yeah. is actually something. Well, there would have to be the laws of physics. Whatever it is, laws of physics themselves are not nothing. Yes, yes. they are something. Okay. If okay. You want, but, so but now that nothing would be a kind of eternal nothing. Do, do you know what no, I mean? No, nothing doesn't exist. Forget about eternal. Temporal or eternal doesn't apply. No, 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 it but, doesn't even no, no, exist, no, no. my friend. But, but if that Laura the Krausian nothing. If the Krausian nothing is something... We don't talk about the Krausian nothing here. That is a fallacy in itself if you call that nothing. Yes, because to me, that is something. Yes. So let's call something no, by its name. Yourself. Listen to yourself, please. Yeah, go on. You're saying uh, Krauss, 
Pelosi's nothing is actually something. No, he well, called it, it nothing. If, if it's something... No, then no, no, no I'm saying yes. he called it nothing. Yes, yes. yes? But because he was able to define it, yes, yes and extrapolate on it, yeah. it is something. Yes. Okay, but what is nothing? Look, imagine complete darkness, yes? Yes, yes. yes? Where nothing exists. Yeah, yeah. Where there is no thought, yeah, yeah. no light, yes. no material, yes. no time, yes. nothing at all. Yes. Can you imagine such a thing? Yes. Yes. It's kind of hard to perceive as an imperfect yes. being. But, yes. You don't even know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. What are we talking about? You were, you were saying, imagine absolute darkness without no. We are talking about nothing. Yes. We are talking about nothing. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Not exactly. exactly. Well, here's the point. Okay. Well, if nothing you, is what we usually do is perfection. Like it's not infinite. Yes, all it is. No, it's not. Molecules, no, it's not. You, you'd have, uh, you'd say, well, you still I mean, have I mean, empty I mean, space. It's and slides this kind of thing of empty space as being, you know, it can change. Thing, so it's no, no, I'm saying it's nothing. No, no, no. I'm saying nothing. No space, no time, no light, no material, nothing. Anything that you can imagine, that is what that nothing is. Sorry, the converse of that is what the nothing is. Yes, yes. But my point is, we don't know that something can appear from that nothing. Say again? We don't know. Sorry, guys, I can't hear with two conversations. Yes, if you guys want to discuss, if you don't mind. Because the thing is, I can't listen to two discussions at the same time. Yeah. Okay, we go don't on. know that that nothing, that something couldn't just appear out of that nothing. If it was I agree. The the I agree with you. Right. And that is exactly my point. Right. What I'm saying is the origin of this universe yeah. is not from nothing. No, but I'm saying the opposite. I'm saying if you had your complete and utter nothingness, yeah. something might just suddenly appear. How? Um, because that's how things... If something happened. doesn't exist even, Yes. Can it give, ri give rise to something? Well, you're thinking that creation is always like a, like a transitive verb, that A has to create B. It may be that A just creates itself. Things no, just it's called cause and effect. Have you not heard of it? I, I've heard of it, but what they say... Everything that, that begins I to exist... Prove it, but trust me, everything that begins to exist yes. must have a cause. Well, the universe... Physicists. According to the physicists, began to exist because they say that we were like a singularity. Yeah. It, it, it now there was a big bang, yeah. and everything then the physical laws and yes, the, yeah. uh, everything existing, the yeah. stars and every 